Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Citizen Live at One. I am Terry Ann Chibet. Now, four terror suspects found in possession of 62 pieces of explosive material and bang worth 100,000 shillings have been charged in a Nairobi court with the offense. The suspects were charged before Nairobi Chief Magistrate Hana Ndongo. The four were arrested three days ago in Nairobi's Majengo area. Among the suspects is a Ugandan national who was also charged with being in the country illegally. The four were denied bail after they pleaded not guilty to the charges leveled against them and will remain in custody for the next seven days at the Kilimani police station as police conclude their investigations. Their case will come up for mention on the 30th of this month. The four, Mohamed Yusuf Kuloba, Jibril Kiyama Musudi, Julius Karioki Maina, and Mwanaidi Wanjiko Mwika, were arrested three days ago in Nairobi's Majengo area. Among the suspects is a Ugandan national who was also charged with being in the country illegally. The four were denied bail after they pleaded not guilty to the charges leveled against them and will remain in custody for the next seven days at the Kilimani police station as police conclude their investigation. <coughs> the case will come up for mention on the 30th of this month. Esther Kahumbi, Citizen Live at 1. The High Court in Mombasa has begun hearings in a petition seeking the nullification of Ali Hassan Joho's election as Mombasa governor on grounds that he does not possess a valid degree certificate. Joho's lawyers, led by Paul Butti, sought to have the judges dismiss the petition, saying the court did not have jurisdiction over the case, a submission that was strongly objected to by the petitioner's lawyer, Rekandi Ngewene, who urged the court to guard against being sidetracked from the core issues of the case. The matter of Mombasa Governor Ali Hassan Joho's degree certificate, or lack of it, was again before the court. This time in Mombasa, where a three-judge bench is set to rule on whether the case filed by Cyrus Otuke, seeking the nullification of Joho's March 2013 election, would go into full hearing. Yes. Joho's lawyers, Paul Booty and William Ogaka, sought to have the case dismissed on the outset, filing a preliminary objection seeking to have the case stopped on the grounds that the petitioner had sought recourse in the wrong court saying any case seeking the reversal or nullification of election results should be filed in an election court. There is no other court vested with jurisdiction to issue that certificate except an election court or an appellate court from an election petition. Saying any case seeking the reversal or nullification of election results should be filed in an election court. Further, Joho's lawyers argued that their client had been unfairly subjected to several cases filed in different courts over the same issue of the validity of his degree, stating that the litigants might be working together to frustrate their client. We are allowing ourselves to be taken back to the very bad old days of petitions going on for five years, which these courts had themselves recognized was a blot in the judicial system. Individuals of certain parties acting in cahoots or in corruption subject one opponent into several litigations over the same aspect. The petitioner's lawyer, Gikandi Ngibuini, however, objected to the allegations of collusion between his client and one Janet Mbete, who also filed a similar case before the High Court in Nairobi, with the lawyer urging the judges to only focus on the merits and demerits of the case before them. Therefore, my good friend Mr. Mogaka is clearly and deliberately, unfortunately, misleading the court. Because if he has led, if he has led this avidafit from June when we supplied, he would have seen that there has never been correspondence at all. The ruling on whether the case will proceed to a full hearing will be made on the 26th of September this year. Or oh, we know Wayne for season live at one. 
Police in Neri County last night shot dead three armed gunmen who had kidnapped a woman along Ring Road. According to Jane Wanjiro, the gunmen attacked her when she was opening her gate at home and forced her back to the vehicle, which they sped off with after which they started demanding for money. Speaking at the scene, Neri Town Sub-County Commissioner John Marete said that the gang had become notorious for terrorizing residents in Neri Town. Marete said security officers have launched a manhunt for a gunman who escaped during the ordeal. Wakijaribu kunionyesha bunduki na wakaniambia ninyamaze na niingie kwa gari. Nikaingilia mrango wa driver wakaniambia niruke kwa passenger seat nikaruka sasa wa, ali huyu aliingia kwa kwa steering akajaribu kurudisha gari nyuma nilivona vile vile anaendesha nikamwambia wacha ni kuendeshe nitapeleka mahali utaniambia sasa akasema hapana unafikiria sijui kuendesha gari sasa watatu walikuwa nyuma na mimi nilikuwa pale mbele this guys who have been guard down they are some of the most wanted criminals within our area and we want to assure the members of the public that we shall do everything possible to make sure that our area is safe we are following some rings to know whether they are the people who have been terrorizing our people around the isolated cases of theft carjacking The Coalition for Reforms and Democracy Court has formally written to National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi replacing Gideon Mungaro with Thomas Ludindi Mwadegu as Minority Whip. The letter was written by Minority Leader Francis Nyenze following a resolution of the court parliamentary group meeting held on Tuesday at the Boma Hotel. Citing Standing Order No. 171 Part 3, Nyenze has also asked the Speaker to withdraw Mungaro's membership in the House Business Committee and replace him with Mwadegu. Court wants the changes and its parliamentary leadership effected immediately. A group of Coast Court members backed by their Jubilee colleagues have defended Mungaro against allegations of being disloyal to the opposition or failing to mobilize the court numbers in the House and accused court leader Raila Odinga of dictatorship. <laughs> Now, members of the Bungoma County Assembly have opposed a directive by the Transitional Authority requiring them not to operate ward offices. The MCS claim that it is their constitutional mandate as legislators and people's repre representatives at grassroots level to do so. Led by the County Assembly's Majority Leader Majimbo Okumu, the MCAs have vowed not to abide by the recommendation by the Transitional Authority that they should not operate a county ward office officers. The MCA has claimed that the move will affect their services for the electorate. The move will affect their services for the electorate. We want to inform the chairman of the transition authority to go and read section 9 of the county government uh, act which states very clearly that uh, members of the county assembly will have uh, contact with the electorate. The county representatives also took issue with the move by the Commission on Revenue Allocation not to approve the county government's budget. They said that they met all the requirements needed for the budget approval. Act. It is very clear that the county assembly shall approve the county fiscal strategy paper, which we did within the timelines. It is, uh, it is very clear that uh, the budget making process will be within the county integrated development plan, which we approved, which we have already done. The members of the Bungoma County Assembly further accused the Council of Governors of not defending the Constitution to ensure that devolution becomes a success. Hassan Farah, Citizen Live at One. Over 3,000 kilograms of contaminated maize was disposed of by public health officers in Naivasha after tests confirmed that the consignment had high levels of aflatoxin. The bags were seized at Kinungi Primary School two weeks ago, and the sub-county's health officers said they were unfit for human consumption. Abdikraman Abdullah in our report.
Under tight guard, the 35 bags of maize, which were incidentally confiscated from one of the largest primary schools in Naivasha, was set on fire at the town's dam site as members of the public watched from a distance. This comes after the government health officials seized the maize bags and confirmed it was unfit for human consumption. Our public health officers on the ground went there and they took samples of the maize and sent to the government chemist which showed that there were higher and toxic levels of aflatoxins. We have been consulting across the board, even through the NEMA and also through the county director's office, and uh, we were in agreement that that definitely doesn't need feed consumption. Following the revelations, Naivasha sub-county public health officer Caroline Vata said that they had embarked on a major exercise to test all cereals in public schools in the sub-county. Currently, we are also taking samples for, for surveillance on other primary schools and boarding schools just to ensure that uh, all the foods and other grains that are consumed are fit for human consumption. Nakuru County Director of Public Health and Sanitization, Dr. Joseph Lenai, said the county government is working with schools to fully implement health programs. There is what we call the school health curriculum, and that is a curriculum from both the Ministry of Health and also Ministry of Education, uh, looking across the board on issues of health. May it be sanitation, may it be issues of even the building, may it be issue of even health education. Lenai noted that quick action by public health officers to impound the maze saw the lives of many people saved. Rahman Abdullahi for Citizen TV. Narok County leaders have now embarked on an initiative that will help rehabilitate children who have been sexually abused. The leaders, together with children activists, have organized an annual walk to assist these children. Statistics have shown that most of such children have been abused by their own relatives. After years of suffering in silence, finally there is a light at the end of the tunnel for children who have been sexually assaulted. Many of such children have suffered at the hands of their own relatives, forcing them to choose silence instead of reporting to relevant authorities. And now, local leaders have launched an annual work aimed at not only rehabilitating the abused minors, but also sensitize people on the magnitude of the problem. Children need you to stand up and say that in this county, there is going to be a walk, and that walk will be an annualized walk for the rehabilitation of children of abuse. Speaking at St. Teresa Development Center in Navasha, a home of sexually and physically abused minors, the center director, Father Isaac Macarias, said there is need to hold a walk against child abuse, seeing that many of the children in the center had been sexually abused at a very tender age and were undergoing counseling for two years to help them deal with their dark past. You have seen the statistics, 75% of the children in Kenya at the end of the day they become abused by the age of 15. According to the Kenya Health Demographic Survey, you also find that uh, when you look at gender-based violence, 33% of women in their households do undergo gender-based violence in one way or the other. The Nakuru County First Lady Lucia Mbugwa, who paid the center a visit, vowed to mobilize people towards the walk and end the child abuse menace in the county. She committed to being the walk patron in an effort to assist the minors, majority of whom are orphans. We'll make sure we support these children. I know there are many there in the community. They cry to no one. But now when you come to a place like this is when you realize this is a reality. And this is what is happening in our society. This comes just days after angry parents stormed a school in Navasha following cases of the head teacher sexually abusing children. Eunice Mwai for Citizen Live at One. Residents of Laikipia North constituency staged protests in the town last evening and marched to the area's uh, deputy county commissioner's office protesting of a push to cancel the recent police recruitment exercise in the area. The residents accused local uh, member of parliament Matthew Lempurkel of seeking the cancellation, saying the recruitment exercise in the area was above board. Lisa Anyango with that story. 
The demo by the Laikipia North residents was done a day after MPs in Parliament prevailed upon the National Police Service Commission to stop admission of all the 10,000 police recruits until an audit was done. The Laikipia residents, however, expressed their disappointment with their area member of parliament, Lempur Kel, whom they accused of being behind a plot to cancel the entire exercise. According to them, the exercise in the area was fairly done. Yale yote ilifanyika haba tare kumina ine kwa kuandika vijana wetu. Elitendeka haki bila ile kusema honko. Na watoto, watoto wale walishukulio hapa ni kutoka wilaya hii ya laikipi ya North. Na sujui ni kitu gani mtu ya yote naeza kuenda kutangaza hata kwa bunge kusama kwamba kulikuwa na uchejezi. They are opposed to any attempts to cancel the exercise. They wondered why the Member of Parliament had written a letter to the Inspector General of Police, David Kimayo, claiming there were irregularities in the area. Sisi kama watu walaikipia north, tungetaka tu kuambia mweshimi wa wetu, atafautisha kati ya constituency boundary na kati ya district boundary. Kwa sababu shida yake anataka kuimportu watu kutoka ma district ingine waje wajiriwe kwa laikipia North District. Area Subcounty Commissioner Benedict Nduva who met the protesters urged residents to be calm as the matter was being looked into. Liz Anyango live at one. At least six drivers were last night arrested in Narok for allegedly driving their vehicles while drunk. The motorists were arrested by police and National Transport and Safety Authority officers last night at a roadblock located half a kilometer from Narok town. The six drivers were taken into custody after being found with alcohol levels way above the legally acceptable level following breathalyzer tests administered on them at the roadblock along the Narok Bomet Highway. Drivers who refused to cooperate with the police officers had a rather hard time as officers later managed to force them to take the alcohol blue test. Now, as the holy month of Ramadan nears completion, Muslims in many parts of the world and the country are preparing for the Eid al-Fitr holiday, which will be marked by special prayers and celebrations. In Wajir County, residents have started preparing for the day and are busy shopping for special gifts for their loved ones and themselves. Abdi Osman has the details. Uh, <laughs> Sealing a deal at one of Wajer's many livestock markets. More and more customers are flocking to the markets to buy livestock for slaughter during the Eid al-Fitr celebration, which is just around the corner. The festivity marks the end of the holy month of Ramadan. In Wajer town, the days leading to Eid al-Fitr only mean one thing, booming business for traders here. And as cash changes hands at the livestock market, Open-air traders in Wajer town are also a busy lot. They too are enjoying booming business thanks to increased shopping for Eid al-Fitr. Customers can be seen selecting shoes and other items ahead of the special day. Sales have picked up here as customers pick items as varied as toys, perfumes and Islamic cups. Traders are enjoying every bit of the moment. Uh, 
sisi ya kuchinja Ramadhani na amin suka idi at the open air cloth market, there is a hum of increased activity as more shoppers pick their favorite items. Hawkers on foot are also registering improved business. In the meantime, the fasting and prayers during the holy month of Ramadan continue. But the increased shopping in Wajar town reminds all that Eid ul Fitr is indeed just around the corner. Abdi Osman, Citizen Live at One. Citizen Live at One takes a short break. Now we'll be back with more after the break. Don't go too far.